Hello everyone, this is the video of Legal Studies, class 12 and unit 2nd and the topic that is Law of Contract and under the Contract Law, today we will be discussing the one of the principles of contract that is consideration. So what is consideration? Well, the kind of meaning it has given legally in this contract law, it is something different from your perception about the consideration word literally. So consideration means the interest, the benefit that you have while making a contract and that is essentially required. So it means something like that if you are making a contract with someone that I want to buy his property. In this case, his property is consideration for me and the money that I will pay to him that is consideration for him. So it is mutually beneficial kind of thing. So consideration talking about the interest benefit that essentially involved in a contract. Without that contract is void. Though there are exceptions but that will discuss later. At this point in time you understand this that without consideration contract is void. So now let's check out what is the technical definition that is given in the Indian Contract Act. Section 2D of Indian Contract Act defines consideration as when at the desire of the promiser the promisee or any other person has done or abstained from doing or does or abstains from doing or promises to do or to abstain from doing something. Such act or abstinence or promise is called a consideration for the promise. Well, the definition is highly complicated for you to appreciate. But don't worry, what it is saying that you need to understand two points in order to understand this definition. The, in the contract, it is not always or essentially required that you are giving something and someone is taking something. Okay, let's understand it with an example. In the first example that you are buying a property from someone, say from Mr. George, you are buying a property. So his property for you is consideration and the amount you supposed to be paying against that property that is consideration for Mr. George. Second example is that you asked Mr. George not to perform certain task and for that you will be paying certain amount say thousand dollar. So in this case if he that is Mr. George doesn't perform that act then that is for you that is consideration non-performance of the act that you said and the amount you will be giving to him that is of course consideration so that is also a contract so you need to understand both the aspects of the contract so that's why it is saying here if you now focus on the definition when at the desire of the promiser the promisee or any other person has done or abstained from doing. Abstained means that is restrained to do or does or abstains from doing. So up to this point it is clear. Now next further it is saying or promises to do means it is talking about that in future. I will do this on certain date after one week, after one month. So that is also included in the valid contract. So it is in the present as well as in the future. So it is talking about the performance of certain act that is contracted in an agreement and maybe it is asked to perform or maybe it is asked not to perform. In both the cases it is a valid contract. So and the promise that is done that is defined here as a consideration. However, in order to understand this definition, let's check it out in more detail. 
consideration only at the desire of the promiser the first clause what it says that consideration only at the desire of the promiser what does it mean you contracted with someone to buy his property so in order to buy the property the amount that is fixed by the seller if you are paying that amount only then it is considered as valid because well of course you can do the negotiation kind of things but whatever the amount decided if you don't pay that amount if you pay less than that then it is invalid or void next point is consideration can be performed by promisee or any other person that is privity of consideration what does it mean that take an example you promised something to pay certain amount okay so if you didn't pay that amount on your behalf someone else your relative and all paying that amount that will okay okay so that is as saying here promise or any other person so your relatives your friends they can also pay that is known as the principle of privity of consideration okay so it is understood now the third point of this definition basically third clause of this definition is consideration can be promised for the past which means already done for present means executed or for future means executory well of course you would have the confusion regarding the past how it is possible well understand it again with an example suppose there are two persons a and b a borrowed certain amount from b and after a few days or a, suppose after almost year a wanted to buy b's car and b is interested in selling his car so the consideration that is the amount that a wanted to give b that is 50000 and that is okay with the b b also wanted to sell his car on the amount of 50000 only so it is fixed but now since b already borrowed some amount from a that is say 10000 rupees so that 10000 rupees can be deducted from the total amount or say if b has taken the 50000 rupees from a so at this point in time a doesn't need to pay any amount so that will be settled in that so this is how the consideration can be calculated even something done in the past secondly the present of course there is no issue on this account you can appreciate this point or for future of course this is also easy to understand that you promise to pay certain amount say 50000 rupees to buy your friend's car and you pay 10000 rupees now and rest of the amount you will be paying after a month that is 40000 rupees so for future that is also okay that is valid contract the last point of this definition is something that is an act abstinence or promise of course some act something involved abstinence means restraining something or promise that is regarding the performance of certain act of course you are promising which is known as consideration as per this definition so this is about the meaning and concept of consideration now let's check out what is meaning of void consideration void the literal meaning of void that is not acceptable not legal you can say like that so and since it is void so it is not enforceable the more important point you need to focus on that is enforceability and since it is void so it is not enforceable as per the section 25 that an agreement made without consideration is void as in the beginning of this class we have started with this sentence that without consideration 
the agreement is void unless it is expressed in writing and registered under the law for the time being in force for the registration of documents and is made on account of natural love and affection between parties standing in a near relation to each other or unless so in order to understand this provision if you can correlate this provision with one of the modes of transfer of property that we have already studied while studying the transfer of property that is gift that is also the contract as per this okay so this is how you can link one topic with other so if you are gifting something to someone who is your relative your friend or whatever and you are promising to gift for that remember the essential elements of gift it must be registered the same thing it is saying here so in writing or registered so if you focus on the definition or this provision it is saying the same thing so here consideration is not involved in the gift there is also no consideration so similar point if that won't be valid then gift will be void but gift is valid so this provision discussing about the gift so again i repeat this it is expressed in writing and registered under the law for the time being in force for the registration of documents and is made on account of natural love of course for love and affection you are giving someone gifting someone that is of course because of love and affection between parties standing in a near relation near relation that is clarifying though you don't suppose to be giving something to a stranger so that is acceptable and it is legal enforceable because it is valid contract without consideration as well the next exception without consideration of the contract is it is a promise to compensate wholly or in part a person who has already voluntarily done something for the promisor or something which the promisor was legally compelled to do well in order to understand this provision again go back a little we have discussed one example that is regarding the past what happened there if something done in the past then that can be compensated in the present contract so in that case it is valid because at this point in time one party is not giving something because you already owe something to him okay so that is getting compensated so consideration that you can say indirectly that is already done in the past so next point now it is a promise made in writing and signed by the person to the charge therewith or by his assent generally or especially authorized in that we have to pay wholly or in part a debt of which the creditor might have enforced payment but for the law for the limitation of suits well again this is complicated but don't worry try to understand it with an example what it's saying that there are two persons a and b a has borrowed certain amount from b okay and what happened as you know that there is another law that is known as limitation act in civil cases it is applicable though it is not applicable in criminal cases keep in mind the limitation act is applicable only in the civil cases not in the criminal cases so this is borrowing money and all it comes under the civil cases so what happens here there is certain limitation period say it is 3 years in the case of property it is 12 years so normally if you consider the 3 years in case of the money and all borrowed so after 3 years a who has given certain amount to b cannot demand that amount legally because law has no provision for a to help him okay so legally a lost his right to demand the money from b though that is his money but he cannot 
So now come back to this provision, what it's saying. Now you understood the concept of limitation act. So what this definition or provision is saying that in this case, if B promises something that I will return back your amount, then that is a valid contract and that is legally enforceable as well. Though that is performed in the past, but it is starting with the first conversation, first agreement, so it is valid. Okay, so that is valid and enforceable contract. However, if we focus on these three provisions, we find that only first one has no consideration. Otherwise, in subsequent two, there are consideration though it is performed in some way or some other way or in present or in past, but that is there. Okay, so this is the exception of the valid contract without consideration. Now come to the next provision that is section 24 states that if any part of a single consideration for one or more objects or any one or any part of any one of several considerations for a single object is unlawful the agreement is void. Now if you remember the one of the principles of the contract that is lawful object. Okay, so what it is saying that if any part of the consideration, well of course there are two or three consideration in plurality. So if any part of that is unlawful object, okay, then it is a wide contract. Say it is saying something like that you are dealing with some lawful object, but the consideration the amount you are paying that is unlawful. So you are buying some grains, rice or wheat and instead you are paying some drugs or something like that, money with drugs, some part means you are paying money as well as some drugs. So then it, this contract becomes wide. So now the interesting part of this topic that is case study. The name of the case is Durga Prasad versus Valdev. The facts of this case is the plaintiff constructed certain shops in a town at the instructions of district collector and then defendant came and taken those shops on rent. He promised to pay the rent as well as certain commissions that is 5% on each article that he is supposed to be selling through those shops. So what happened that later he paid the rent but he missed to pay the commissions. And the commissions that he promised to pay against the amount that the plaintiff spent in constructing the shops. Okay. So he didn't pay the commissions. Now what happened? He filed a lawsuit that he didn't get the commissions. Then what the decision court gives that it says that this is not a valid contract because the promise that is made regarding the rent and the commissions that is promised to pay that doesn't come under the this contract. So the defendant is not liable to pay the commission amount because the amount that he has spent in constructing those shops, it was not promised by the defendant, rather he constructed as the instructions of the district collector. So this defendant is not responsible for that cost. So this was the case and you want, you can check out this case in detail as well. So this is all about the consideration. So we have studied the meaning and concept of the consideration. We have studied the wide or valid consideration. And lastly, we have also studied the relevant case. So I believe you must understood now the concept of consideration. That is one of the principles of contract. So if you wish or even I suggest like every video, just watch it again. 
so that you can clear your concept of consideration and see you in next video